Megan Jabori, lead course instructor at JD Advising. This video is a sample of our brand new, highly reviewed lectures that have helped countless students pass the bar exam and realize their dream of becoming lawyers. For more information, please visit jdadvising.com. You can also sign up below to get our bar exam essay guide on the highly tested topics completely free. Enjoy the video and don't forget to like and subscribe for more valuable free content. This question says, oh, the owner of Blackacre wanted to get rid of his land, Blackacre, and move somewhere warmer. But he still wanted to preserve the landscaping of the beautiful property. O drew up a deed of conveyance to his daughter A. The deed stated the following. To A, for so long as she does not remove any of the trees or flowers, and if she does, then I have the right to re-enter. A gladly accepted the deed and managed O's property nicely for a few years. But she soon decided that she did not like the large oak tree in the front yard. She decided to have it removed. At the moment the tree was removed, what interests did O and A have in Blackacre respectively? So here the subject being tested in this question is real property. And the legal issue is what are O's and A's respective interests in the property? To determine their interest in the property, we need to focus on the precise language in the grant. We can find this precise language by going back to the fact pattern. The facts state, 2A, for so long as she does not remove any of the trees or flowers, and if she does, then I have the right to re-enter. So in terms of the rule and legal analysis, with our focus being on the language in the grant, we can see that we have a conflict. This is because the language used is that of both a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent and a fee simple determinable. So let's turn to those rules. A fee simple subject to a condition subsequent is a present interest in land that is subject to a condition occurring. If the condition occurs, then the grantor has the power to retake the estate by entering. This is called the right of entry. A fee simple subject to a condition subsequent will always be combined with a right of entry. The present estate will end only when the grantor actually enters the property to retake it. You can recognize that a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent has been created in a grant when you see conditional language used as well as the right of entry being reserved. So some examples of conditional language are things like but, if, on condition, and provided. Now turning to a fee simple determinable. These are similar, uh, but they require specific durational language to be used in the grant or in the conveyance. These phrases of durational language include for so long as, sometimes it's shortened to just so long as, until, while, or drain. The grantor retains a possibility of reverter. One of our memorization tips for remembering the language used to create a fee simple determinable is what we call our food words mnemonic. That stands for for so long as, until, while, and during. So to get these types of questions correct, the key is to memorize the language used to create these present interests and their associated future interest. Remember that the future interest that goes with a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent is what we call the right of entry. And the land in question goes back to O or the grantor when O enters. The possibility of reverter is the future interest that O has when he creates a fee simple determinable. The land goes back to O automatically upon the condition occurring. Reversion is the future interest that goes with a life estate. When O gives someone a life estate, O has reversion and they get the land back when the measuring life for the life estate given dies. Finally, when a fee simple absolute is created, O uh, takes or keeps nothing for himself. There is no future interest associated with a fee simple absolute. Lastly, sometimes a grant will include mixed language, specifically fee simple determinable language combined with language that reserves that right of entry for the grantor. 
In this case, courts will construe this grant as a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent. In our specific fact pattern here, the grant contains fee simple determinable language, for so long as. But we also see that a right of entry was reserved by the grantor, or O. So as we've previously discussed, courts construe this type of grant with mixed language as a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent in A, with O having that right of entry. Now we have to consider what effect A's removal of a tree has on the party's ownership interests. And the facts ask us, who owns what at the moment the tree gets removed? Well, there's no indication that O has entered to retake the property. Therefore, A's fee simple subject to a condition subsequent has not ended, and O still has that right of entry. So the answer to this question is that A has a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent, and O has a right of entry. So let's turn to our answer choices to see which one says just that. Answer choice D reflects what we just said. O has a right of entry, and A has a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent. Remember, when you see a mixed language grant, meaning a grant with durational language, as well as that right of entry being reserved, just like in this question here, courts are going to construe that as a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent. That means, much like our answer choice indicates, that A has a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent, and O has that right of entry. Now we have to consider, just as the question asked, what effect of A's removal of a tree has on the party's ownership interests. And that's again because the facts ask us, who owns what at the moment that tree gets removed? But again, because the facts do not indicate that O has actually entered to retake the property, that means A's fee simple subject to a condition subsequent hasn't ended, and O still has that right of entry to exercise. Now, let's look at our other answer choices to evaluate them just to make sure we're correct. Let's start with answer choice A. It says that O has a right of entry and A has a fee simple determinable. And this is incorrect because while O does hold that right of entry and the grant does contain that fee simple determinable language, O's grant also reserves O that right to re-enter and take the property. And we know that when language is mixed like this, courts are going to construe or interpret that grant to convey a fee simple subject to a condition subsequent, not a fee simple determinable. Answer choice B says O has a fee simple and A has nothing. This is incorrect because O has not re-entered the property yet to exercise that right of entry. While O can now exercise her right, the current estate will not end until O actually does so. And according to the facts, that hasn't happened. Finally, answer choice C says O has a right of entry and A has nothing. C is also incorrect because while O again does hold that right of entry, A does not lose her present interest until O actually enters the estate. So just because A has violated the condition, the property does not automatically revert as it would if it were a fee simple determinable. So the two takeaways from this problem are as follows. One, pay close attention to the wording and punctuation in real property questions. This subject is all about form and the wording that the question uses can make all of the difference. For example, to create a joint tenancy, the words joint tenancy with rights of survivorship have to be used. If a conveyance or a deed merely says jointly or as joint owners, that is not going to be sufficient and a tenancy in common is what will be created. Our second takeaway from this problem is that phrasing and punctuation matter when we consider and evaluate future interests. The following two conveyances say essentially the same thing, but they actually create or give two totally different future interests. So for example, the first says O gives to A for life and then to B, unless B does not outlive A, in which case it goes to C. The second grant says O gives to A for life and then to B if B survives A, otherwise to C. Look at where our punctuation falls. For that first example, O gives to A for life. We see a comma, so we're pausing. So this means A has a life estate 
and then to B with another comma. So we're pausing. So B has a vested remainder, unless B does not love outlive A, in which case it goes to C. So C has an executory interest, and now we can further elaborate on B's vested remainder and say that it is subject to total divestment. Basically, B might never actually get it. For that second example, to A for life, again, we know A has a life estate. Then to B, if B survives A. If we pause at that comma, that means it's a contingent remainder because B has to survive A, otherwise to C. And again, C has that contingent remainder as well. Real property often values form over substance, and the words as well as the punctuation used matter greatly.